Hello everyone and welcome to another SQL query training session with Learn at NoStar. In today's session, we are going to write a SQL query to calculate the yearly, quarterly and monthly totals in the same query. So we are going to be working with the sales data. This table is also available in the Adventure Works database for SQL Server. And I've also created some dummy data for this table. So I will be sharing all those links with you as well. So you can check out those links to create the table and load some sample data in this table. So the important information or the important columns in this table are basically the order date. And then you have a subtotal amount associated with the order date, which will give us the sales amount for particular order uh, on a yearly, monthly or a quarterly basis. Now, if we want to do it really simple, it's not difficult to calculate a yearly total. What we need to do is simply define the sum of this column subtotal. And then we just need to group by the level on which we want the aggregation to be performed. So if we are saying the year, then basically what we are aiming at is calculating the year from the order date column and grouping by that. So here we can include this column in the select statement as well. And if we execute this query, we will get a uh, subtotal for the particular year so we have data for two years 2020 and 2021 and we have got associated sales with these two years now let's say i also want to calculate a monthly total so again even that is not difficult what we need to do is simply add the month to this so month of order date and then group by the year and month and why we are grouping by the year and month both the columns is because the same month can appear in different years the same months will be repeating in different years they're only one to twelve months so to make sure that we are considering the year only of that the month only of that particular year we had we need to include the year column as well so this is simply what we need and if i execute this query i will get the sums based on the different months of the different years so i can achieve this now if i want to combine all these results in the same query what i need to do is use a union all operator now for the union all operator obviously we need to have the same number of columns so since in the second query we have the month included we need to create a dummy column here so that the union all can be performed so for the dummy column we can put any value so we can put uh, we can put null as the value and maybe call it as null as month month is a reserve keyword so let's call it month one or let's just make it null let's not call it anything we can just make it as null and now if we execute this whole query together so we get an error because null cannot be converted to the data type end because the month order date is giving the output as integer so for our purpose let's just change it to md even md will not fit into an integer column by default the database should be converting it into zero that is also okay for us okay so wherever we are seeing the second column as zero that means this particular row these two particular rows are the yearly totals and after that you start seeing the monthly totals corresponding to that particular year so this can be done using the union all queries and we do have the output uh, included in the same result set now we can also include some columns to make it look nice so that we are able to distinguish between the yearly totals and the monthly totals uh, but we will be looking at that when we go to the other approach that we are going to use to perform this query now what are the disadvantages of this approach it is uh, simple the disadvantage is basically that two queries are being executed and two scans of the table 
are happening. So if the data volume is large, it might hit the performance in a way. Also writing the query is not that simple. You have to write many union alls. Maybe we also need the totals at different other levels like the first half of the year and the second half of the year, like the quarters of the year. Then this query will become a little more tedious to write. And also every time the part, one part of the query is executed above the union all, those many times the scanning of the table would be happening. So we're going to look at a better way of performing this. Now grouping sets are what we can use to group at different levels and that is what we are going to use over here. So now let's open a new window and let's go back to our table which is tbo.sales. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to calculate the year from the order date. I am also going to calculate the month from the order date in the same query. And since what I want is the sum of the subtotal, was that the column name? The subtotal column, that's right. Subtotal as sales from dbo.sales I also need to group by. I want the results at the yearly level as well as monthly le level. So what is the option is using something called the grouping sets. When you use the grouping sets you can define different levels at which you want to perform the grouping operation. So the first level for us is going to be the year. So year of order date and the second level is going to be the year and month combination. So year of order date and month of order date. So this is going to be my grouping sets which I'm going to use. So if I execute this query now, what I'm going to get in the result is first I've got all the records from 2020 year 2020 you can see these are the month numbers one two three four five six okay you have those monthly totals across the month numbers then after that you get a column where the month is null wherever this month is null this is the yearly total so this is your yearly total that you have got. Now it's not very easy to understand. You cannot just go and present this in a report. You will have to uh, convert this null into some more readable values. And that is what we are going to do now. So what we are going to do is add a simple case statement and say when. So what is happening is for the yearly total the month is going to be null you cannot decide a month because you are grouping on the yearly uh, level so we can simply say that when month of order date is null then you can say yearly else monthly and as and then you have to you can just give any column name which you want to call that column so now if i execute this query it would be something more clear for me so you have the totals monthly totals we would know that these are monthly totals and these are yearly totals okay so it is more clear to us now which is the monthly total and which is the yearly total this is all in caps and I think it's better to make it properly formatted instead of sounding so loud. So this is what we are going to get. Okay, now we are going to introduce one more level here. So the other level that we said we wanted was at the quarterly level. So let's make it a little more complicated and add the quarter to this. So year, month. And before the month, let's add the quarter. Now, to find out the quarter, we are going to use the date part function, which is going to give us the quarter name. So, what we want from the date part function is the quarter. So, quarter of the column order date 
as quarter name. Okay, and we do not need this in the quotes. We just need it to be simple. Okay, so now I have the quarter. Let me just copy this and add it to the grouping sets. So now I'm going to define one more level of the grouping set, which is going to be the quarter. So let us define it before the month. So here I'm going to define the quarter that we just calculated. So this is your quarter. Now, <clears throat> the same case with quarter. Those quarters are going to repeat for every year. So to be able to distinguish each individual quarter of the year, we need to include the year of order date as well. So let's just copy this from here and include this as well. So now this becomes my grouping set. Okay. Okay. So these are the results that we have got. We know the monthly. Monthly are right. We know the yearly, which is also right. If you scroll down at the bottom, you will see that here you have got the quarter values. Now, when it is a quarter value, the month is still null. The year is there because the year can still be calculated for the quarter. But here we are getting yearly and we need to change it to quarterly. Okay, so now we need to change our query. So what we observe here that for yearly totals, the quarter will be null, the month will be null. For monthly totals, the quarter will be null and the year the year would be populated okay so now the case statement that we have written we need to modify it um, for the yearly one so you, so we say when month of order date is null which is right okay and the quarter name is also null so whatever is the formula that we have written here for quarter name let's just copy that okay and use this and then and is null when both of them are null then it's going to be yearly okay then we need to introduce one more when statement and then we can go okay now for quarterly what we see that the month is null so when month of order date is null and we can remove this part then it can be quarterly else it is going to be monthly okay let's execute this whole thing and see if we have got it right so let's go down and it is now quarterly so now we have got it right these are the quarterly totals and we can easily distinguish that these are the quarterly totals now let's say i do not want them to appear this way i want them to appear uh, like in a way where we I get the yearly totals first then the quarterly and then we they are broken down into monthly totals so what we can do here now is add an order by statement simple and whatever uh, is the order in which you want your totals you can format them right here month for the date okay and now let's execute this query so what we will get is first we got the yearly total, then we got the monthly total, and then we got the quarterly totals. Uh, why this happened? Because the nulls went first. So this is how the grouping sets can be used. This is one example of using the grouping sets. They can be used for different purposes. You can have different kinds of granularity, maybe not dependent on date, maybe a country, region, state, area kind of granularity. So you can calculate the different totals at the country level, then the region, then the area, the state, the province, the city. All those things can be achieved. Now, one other interesting thing that you can notice over here is that there's also something called just the 
empty brackets over here so if you include just these empty brackets you are going to get a super set so this is what you are going to get sum of all the values that you've got so this is the grand total kind of thing that you have got over here so if you just include these empty brackets that is what you are going to get a grand total of all these different values that you have in the 17 other rows so you have 18 rows whatever is the total of those 17 rows appears here over here so let's say you are doing a summation at the country level and then at the end you want to see the summation for all the countries you can simply use these empty brackets and you would be able to get all that sum so these are different ways in which the grouping sets can be used there are also other functions like the roll up and the cubes that can also be used but i think this is a good way of achieving what we wanted to achieve and i hope that you found this video useful if you did then please do not forget to subscribe to our youtube channel because we will be posting many more videos soon if you want a video on a particular topic then please post that topic that query in the comments below and we will do our best to make a video on that topic as well thanks a lot for watching again goodbye and see you in the next video bye